This week's Tech Nation is all about spam, botnets, and well, stuff going on inside your computer that you don't know about. And well, I'm back from Peru. Yes. Hi, and welcome to Tech Nation TV. This is episode number 43. My name's Rusty G. I'm Alan. And like I said, I'm back from Peru. I am iPadless. I am iPodless times two. I am Lumia less. I am Inspireless. I am keyboardless. I, I, I mean, there, I could go on and on. So right? is this some kind of radical diet? I know you became a vegan <laughs> even recently. So is this, is this an Apple diet? You no, know, some this, Apple products. Yeah, and... no. <laughs> what happened? Uh, unfortunately, while I was in Peru uh, on a mission trip, we were. I was filming everybody. You know, doing short little bursts of things, just trying to capture while we were there what was going on. Yeah. And we sat down at an American restaurant, McDonald's. In Peru. In Peru. Let's go to McDonald's. <laughs> I'm loving it. There were also Starbucks. <laughs> there were, I mean, there were other KFC, Chili's. I, I'm sorry, but when you go to a foreign country, you want to have foreign food, but whatever. So we were yeah, at McDonald's. The clampets go to Maui, huh? <laughs> so we're at McDonald's, and I'm, you know, I've got my iPhone out. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was I had just bought a brand new external battery that does one of those fast charge things. It was like 17 bucks at Walmart. I, it's not gonna do much, but I had it out and I was trying to fast charge my phone mm -hmm. and the spotter, as I will call him, because he obviously spotted what I had, the spotter saw all the electronics as I was switching, going from one phone to another, because I was changing phones, I was doing battery, you know, he probably saw all the stuff that was in my back, all my electronics, except for my laptop, thank goodness. Um, and he spotted me and I went away, went to film everybody. We had internet there at the McDonald's, so I was filming everybody doing a live broadcast type thing to see. And as I came back, I turned around and my bag was gone. And I was like, did anybody catch where my bag went? Because there's 30 of us. <laughs> Nobody caught where my bag went. And we were upstairs on the second floor and it bottleneck in, as far as leaving there was the only floor. One there's only one way in and one way out. And yeah. I'm like, we were sitting in front of that exit. How did nobody catch where my bag went to? So I unfortunately spent the next 20 minutes like Jason Bourne searching every little nook and cranny because I had over a grand worth of electronics in this bag. And I, the, the pastor that was with us was trying to get me to stop. And I was like, I don't think you understand. There's a lot of money that was in that bag. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's not that the stuff can't be replaced. It's just that I'm not rich and I can't just replace it. And I didn't have insurance because it's my stuff. Exactly, it's my stuff. And so he he let me rummage around a few more minutes, not much longer. And he told us, "Look, you know, you got to go." And I was like, "Look, I'm an adult. I have a cell phone. I have a wallet. I can find my way home. I'm good." So he was like, "No, you got to come with a group. I'm responsible for you." Blah blah. It gives me all this spiel, and I'm hot, and I'm just like, you know, this is retarded, whatever. And so. The missionary that we were with came over and said, don't worry about it. We'll get you your stuff back. We'll take care of you. And then the pastor was like, no, no, we're not going to take missionary money. We'll get the thing to take care of you. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, all right, well, if somebody's going to take care of me, yeah, I'm good. Okay, yeah, you can relax. S yeah, so I was a little less, you know, tense and, you know, ready to beat somebody upside the head and see the first red bag that I could find and beat them. It was a little less of that. So I calmed down and went back with the group and made a few phone calls. I sent you a text and sent, you know, a couple people texts. We were on the case. Yeah, I actually sent him my username and password and I was like, hey, change it for me, look for my stuff. Because once we left, I no longer had internet. I only had text messaging. So I was texting you saying, hey, see if you can use the find my app or find my yeah. iPhone. Which is a tip, turn that on. I mean, we never found Rusty's iPad because- It never got connected. Apparently it st still hasn't even been connected to internet because I wiped it. So as soon as they turn it on, it's it's wiped, which is sad because as soon as they wipe it, we lose, you know. I don't think, I, we'll have to test this out because if it gets turned on, I think it gets wiped as far as all your data, but I still think you still have a connection to it as far as well, tracking according, it. According to find my iPhone or find my right. iPad, they say if you wipe it, you're not gonna find it. Okay, all right, well that's good, kind of. Uh, yeah. You, you know, I don't get my hardware back. Yeah, but your stuff isn't, you know, floating around Peru somewhere. Yeah, so... So if there's any kind of, you know, security features on your phones, I don't know what Nexus, or not Nexus, but Nokia or 
Sam or Samsung or Sprint or you know I didn't know about those other companies you were yeah. to have but yeah get find my iPhone find my iPad find somebody that has one like he found me you know I was able to track his phone if I can find a photo of it uh, we'll have it up here but uh, where I could find his phone where it showed he was in Lima Peru yeah so it works even internationally but it has to be connected to internet yeah that's, that's, the, only drawback. that's the only thing that sucks I, I really have an idea for a security deal there that I think goes beyond Apple we can talk about that off camera kind of it's it's basic stuff which I think would be great but yeah it was it was rough to lose all of my electronics basically I mean everything that I had was in that bag and people were like well, why'd you bring all that and I was like well uh, I'm the tech guru uh, I, I had three phones with me all for cameras because I, I didn't I don't have a digital camera I have cell phones, and so I was using cell phones for digital cameras and stuff like that. Had my iPad for entertainment on the plane, yep. which was great on the flight down there. I was able to watch all my podcasts and then come back, and you know, I've got nothing. So the plane flight home was me sleeping. <laughs> but uh, anyway, needless to say, yeah, HTC, um, they actually have, I think it's uh, HTCSense.com. If you have that uh, version, the Sense software from HTC. Uh, you can use HTC Sense to track your phone. I haven't done that one yet. I need to sign back into that one and see if that one's working. Yeah, is that HTC only? Uh, yeah, that's HTC only. So it's not for Android devices, just for your HTC Android devices. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lumia, I don't believe from Nokia, I don't believe has any sort of tracking software. So I I'm not 100% on that. Uh, but yes, Apple does. They And unfortunately, the device has to be connected to the net somehow. Unfortunately, that iPad, I. It, it was an iPad uh, 3G with uh, Wi-Fi. I didn't buy the 3G package. There was no need. I don't ever. I'm really at Wi-Fi all the time. So, yeah. unfortunately, until it gets connected back to the network somehow, I'm not gonna know where it was. The only thing is, I'm probably gonna get a notification from Apple that says your iPad has been wiped, and then that'll be the last known location. I'm like, crap. Unless somebody feels the need, because my badge little thing from the airlines was actually attached to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that might you know show up on my doorstep in two weeks and I get an empty red bag hey. and none of my electronics but anyway neither here nor there just get back right back into the news we missed a few things we actually had an episode where we talked about Apple and iOS 6 and all that stuff since all that is now pretty much everybody knows about it we're not going to talk about it what we are going to get into is most recently Google I.O. just last week announced a lot of things uh, we're going to talk about the Nexus 7 tablet which they are talking about Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a Kindle Fire. Yeah, it's it's a small tablet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, nothing really. There's it, to be honest with you, everything that's coming out now, it's all the same pretty much. It's 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 it, hey, it's a tablet. Yeah. Uh, now the Microsoft one with the built-in already built-in keyboard in the case. Yeah. Which, well, it's not like mine, but it's like the case you get already has a flat keyboard. Yeah. And that was a cool idea. The Microsoft uh, Surface, I believe, is what that one was called. Yeah. Uh, both Google I.O. and uh, as I was leaving for Peru, uh, Microsoft had their big announcement as well. They announced mm -hmm. that Surface, uh, which was kind of cool because they have, they actually had some design thought into it. They they cut off the edges instead of being a flat edge or a curved edge. Well, they have a curved edge, but 22 degree angles on the curved edge so that everything kind of feels smooth whenever you have it in your hand. Mm -hmm. Plus, on the back where they have the camera in the middle, like a normal laptop would have it here facing you, they have it facing out. It actually doesn't face straight out because it would be tilted at a 22 degree angle. So not only is the tablet tilted at 22 degrees, but the camera's tilted at 22 degrees so that when it's sitting on a flat top, it's actually looking out yeah. instead of down where it would be angled. So I thought that was pretty cool. So two new tablets to be looking forward to. Microsoft has no date yet. Um, very few people have touched the, surf the Microsoft Surface. A lot of people have touched the Google uh, uh, Nexus 7. Yeah. Again, it's another tablet. The only big difference is the Nexus 7 does not have an outward facing camera because they don't think that it needs it. Just like the Kindle Fire didn't have a camera on it. Well, I mean, it's like, I'm going to take a photo. <laughs> Yesterday was the 4th of July. We were downtown. And I saw this. Really? With iPads? With iPads. Taking wow. photos with iPads. That's awesome. I took one with my iPhone. Which, it, yeah. It, it yeah. has a better camera and it's smaller so I can still see the show and <laughs> click a photo yeah the the yeah. Nexus 7 does have a front facing camera for video chat so once that software hits 
Uh, there's some news about there out there about them hacking into the software and getting into the actual camera app, as it were, having access. But to really be honest with you, what's the use? Because if you have to face it this way to use it, then you're having to do this because it. it yeah. I, yeah, whatever. That's fine. So the other thing was that uh, Google announced. Uh, that Microsoft didn't have because Microsoft was more about the uh, tablet and stuff like that. Google actually announced Nexus Q, which is this little ball, which kind of reminds me of the, uh, what's the? The pair? No, well, the pair as well. But uh, what's the green and black box? Um, boxy. Boxy box, there we go, sorry. Uh, the boxy box because it's not a flat box. It doesn't sit nice along with all your rectangular device boxes. It's a cube, and on the back it has an. It actually has a built-in amplifier, so you can just plug your speakers directly into it. Mm -hmm. The idea behind it is this is a streaming device. So what it is is you connect your Google Play account, and you're able to connect to the Google Play Store all your Google Music if you have Google Music account, all your purchase music from Google Play, anything like that, um, and it all streams from this device, which is. It's like having a home theater system, mm -hmm. except for just um, because on the top of the device is what it looks like a big ball, but it's just the actual turn knob for volume. It has some other devices and things like that, and the line in between actually glows different colors. It's kind of neat, um, but it's got HDMI out and all this stuff for your actual to connect into a full-on home theater system if that's what you want to plug this Google Play device into a home theater system instead of having speakers. But if you see the back of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. You can see it there. Kind of cool. You'd rather have a, a, a receiver? Yeah, I'd rather have a receiver. Yeah, that's built. And yeah, well. I mean, I can, I can have a computer connect up to it via AirPlay. I mean, there's yeah. so many ways to connect these days. It's just like, don't add another device. I, I don't think they're not trying to compete with Apple TV or anything like that because it's not, I, I don't know. It's just really weird. It just gives you a headache, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's a niche device. I, I hope that they do well because uh, they, they've they tried the Google TV. Haven't seen that pick up or blast off anywhere. You know, Google Video is about to die. Well, actually, they finally did cut off oh. Google Video, and this summer they're actually transferring everything over to YouTube, so that's that's out the window. Um, but yeah, so Google and Microsoft for the last few weeks, that's pretty much what it's been. Uh, so we'll look forward to those. Uh, one company that actually is doing something very similar to Google is Olympus. And I'm doing these stories out of order and I'm throwing you off, but that's fine. Uh, the glasses that Google is setting to announce, get this, they showed them off at Google I.O. because Sergey Ben basically walked into the middle of it and was like, all right, Google this, blah, 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 watch this. Have you seen the video? I've seen the video. Yeah. I, now watch a little bit of this video as, as it plays right here in the corner here. Basically what happened is they showed these glasses as they're coming out of a plane, mm -hmm. they're skydiving, they land on top of the Moscone Center where they were announcing all this stuff. They hand the glasses off to these BMX guys. These BMX guys go riding around doing all sorts of stuff on the roof. These BMX guys hand the glasses off to another guy who goes down and he repels down the side of the building. The guy who repels hands it back to another BMXer waiting on the bottom. He goes riding into the conference all the way down. Of course, they switch cameras at this time and they show the guy running, you know, riding the bike yeah. in. And he rides up and puts him right there and gives him to Sergey. And they're showing the video the entire time. So you basically, everybody was watching what was happening above them outside live from the Google Glasses. Seems yeah, like a Rube Goldberg machine live. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, watching the whole thing. Yeah. So that, that happened. Uh, what they were saying is these are not going to be released until sometime next year, which is still six to eight months you know, or we're talking six months, or actually less than that now, five months away, we're in July. Um, but that's still next year, it's kind of a long way away. Mm -hmm. All the, also, $1,500 hmm. for a developer. Yeah, so, you have to be a developer. Yeah, that kind of sucks. So, even I mean, if you are a developer, that still sucks. <laughs> $1,500? bucks. Yeah, so Olympus, a company who apparently back in 2008 actually had some AR glasses back then and they were called something uh, what were they were something Trek mobile eye Trek which mobile hit back in 2008 um, 
they weren't exactly, they never made it to the consumer market. So they looked hideous, they weren't all that good. So they're making the second round. Mm -hmm. They've got some, but they're not talking about software that comes with them. And I'm sure it's gonna be Google Glass ish ish yeah however but it's going to be their own software so we'll see what happens with that i mean well knockoffs are sure to come yeah and uh, you know google was the first one to publicize it really i i don't even remember 2008 of olympus talking anything about this so i mm -mm. i just may not have been in the news at the at that time you know, to, olympus yeah exactly in so um but moving moving right along though for those of you with a PC that is online all the time, like a desktop or maybe even a laptop that you leave on and it's on the internet all the time, you have one? Mm -hmm. Stop it. It's at work. I don't care. Okay. Well, you might want to check because coming this Monday, uh, you might not be able to access the internet. Great. I'll take the day off. <laughs> Monday. Day off. <laughs> Basically, it's about a quarter million computer users that around the world are because of a virus um, it looks like there's probably, I think, just over 245,000 computers uh, worldwide that are infected by the Allurian virus and also its brethren, uh, DetaQ, DetaQ, I don't even know how to pronounce or no, that was the security firm who found it, I'm sorry. But they're uh, Allurian and has some other virus, you know, yeah, others. Same people named hurricanes name these viruses. <laughs> But there's about 45,355 computers in the United States that are infected by this virus. And basically what it does is it takes over your DNS and reroutes you and puts you to other places. And what happened was the FBI found out about this back in November of last year, shut the whole thing down. But what they've done is they've left the servers that they that it connected to on because they were trying to fix those machines. And if your machine hasn't been fixed, which might be yours at work, nice. it's not gonna connect on Monday. So. Basically, DNS flush. Just, just freaking DNS flush. Yeah, it's not hard. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not no reason to panic. Yeah, you can actually check out the website DCWG, I believe is what it is. dot org. Yeah, DCWG dot org. Check out the website. They'll run you through what you're looking for and how to do things and stuff like that. So go check out the website. Make sure your computer isn't infected. I'm sure for those of you with mobile devices like laptops and ultra books and things like that, probably shouldn't be worried. Now you said PC. Just I'm saying, to, well, no, anything that connects a, a computer, a computer, anything okay. that connects to the network or, or the internet. It can be a Mac, it can be a PC, it can be a Linux box. It's it's a virus. A virus is a virus. So make sure you check your PC before Monday hits, and make sure that you're clean from that, so that you don't go to work on Monday and you're like, no internet. Who cares? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, speaking of other things that could cause your computer bad th things is uh, iOS. The um, Apple Max, not Mac Store, but the Apple App Store was actually hit by a, a Russian language malware app and it was reported by The Loop and it looks like any iOS device, iPod yep. Touch, iPad, iPhone, blah, 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 whatever, uh, pretty much got attacked and Apple took the app out and is now basically going through damage control. And the funny thing is, it's also hit the Android market as well mm -hmm. for all your Android devices, the Google Play market and things like that. So uh, make sure you read up about it. Um, it's it, it infected a lot of devices. Uh, if you downloaded this app, I, th I think you've probably already been warned or they've already shut you down or something like that. I'm sure that they have. You've been, you've been sent some kind of uh, email or letter notification. Hopefully. Something. I'm not saying that's 100% sure. Don't count me for that. But just make sure you don't have the app. Apple, Apple's pretty good at uh, doing that. Yeah. Like when that flash thing happened. Yeah. I you know, I, I got an email saying, hey, we're working on this. Yeah. Don't worry. Here's how you can fix this. Yeah. So just and like, never download anything you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, I need to have a security class for a lot of people for <laughs> emails. If you see this kind of email, don't respond. If you get this kind of text message from Walmart that says you got a free gift card, don't click on the link on your smartphone. Yeah, people don't know about drive or drive by downloads. Basically, what it is, <laughs> you, you just go to a website and hit and start downloading. Yeah, it's not like the old day where okay, if I don't click on that file. I'm safe. Yeah. Those days are over. I even recently just got tried to, uh, I was told that I was given $350 for something. Nice. That I, I had on Craigslist for like 125 something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh yeah, did you get the money? 
and I go to my email and sure enough it's in my spam and it says you received three hundred fifty dollars from PayPal on Craigslist blah 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 and it had all the information I was like that's funny I never sent the guy yeah any information but it says I got money so I went along with the story and told the guy oh yeah I got your money I sent it it's on it's gone blah 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 and uh, I forwarded it on to PayPal and I should have kept the email I didn't keep it. I actually forwarded it on, deleted it, and I now looking back, I wish I would have kept it for purposes of showing this is what you're looking for. Uh, PayPal would not resend me that email back, obviously, because they, well, yeah. they then they think I'm the bad guy because I'm asking for the bad email back. Um, but yeah, there's I, I, I seriously think I need to have a security class from a lot of people, but things not to click on, things not to touch, things not to download, so. Even PayPal bank or any bank, if you get an email, hey, we need to update your account information. Yeah. We need to update any information. Click here. Never click there. One short story before we go. I will say this. Also, on the Peru trip, the day I leave, I'm flying from Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. I get off the plane, turn my phone on, beep, voicemail. Okay? This is SunTrust. We're the security department. We'd like to talk to you about purchases made in California and in New York. You get around, don't you? I pulled out my wallet, there sits my card, and I was like, don't know how that happened, but okay, sure. I call them up, and they're like, yeah, we have purchases for $900 for furniture in New York. Were you in New York? I'm on a plane from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to Lima, Peru. You can track all the purchases. I made some in Chattanooga before I left. I made some at the Atlanta airport. You know, you can see, the, yeah. you know, me getting here. I said, so, no, I'm good. Uh, did you make any purchases at Bath and Body Works for like seventy five dollars something like that out in California? And I was like, again, you're always at Bath and Body Works. Look at you. <laughs> so uh, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, you know, no, just whatever. And they're like, well, your card's been compromised. We need to go ahead and shut it down. First problem, what's your card number? Don't why you do you have that? Why do you have need my card number? You're okay, but in in the process of things, my brain was already in panic mode, so I was like. Here's my card number. Yeah. yeah. What's your address? Again, brain was in panic mode. Gave him my address. What's your telephone number? You just called me. What do you mean? Here's my telephone number. Still in panic mode. I get off the phone and I'm like, I gave him everything he needs for purchasing something on the internet, minus the three-digit security number on the back. I didn't give him that. And I was like, that was kind of odd. I think I've just been jacked again. <laughs> yeah, usually a bank would say, uh, let's verify your social security number Last for, four. Sec yeah, for yeah. security purposes, and then, you know, they go Yeah, the, uh, it, was, it was really weird. These down-home like, banks you use. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, so the whole trip, I'm worried that my stuff had been stolen before I even got my other stuff, stuff stolen. stolen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, ah, oh, crap. But luckily, when on our way back, you actually picked me up from Chattanooga to bring me back to Nashville. And you remember us going to buy drinks, and I couldn't buy the drinks. So that was my first notice, like, okay, maybe this is a good thing. Sure enough, I came back home, brand new card in the mail. So SunTrust, with your agents who are working in security desk, train them not to ask for the credit card number. Because <laughs> after, after having that conversation with the guy, I was like, probably shouldn't have done that. Because yeah. he should have never asked for that. But... I got a new card, so it doesn't really matter anymore. So I cut up the old one, got a new one. So just, just, just be careful. You know, even though you get in that panic mode, never give out your card number, never give out your personal information. They should have that already. You know, your bank should have that. So just, just be wary of that. Also, if you go to use any ATM that's not your bank or even your banks, check the card slot. Yeah. Because skimmers can be made to look like anything, and they can clamp right onto the card and. They right there, you're recorded. Yep. And the guy comes back, takes it off the ATM, stick it in his pocket, and walks away. And he's got you. Yep. And get a wallet that's got the in the magnetic shield yeah, thing. Yeah, the magnetic shield wallets. Those are good because skimmers are, you know, I can just right there, I got them. If you got one of those uh, NC. Crap, <laughs> I talk about this chip all the time. <laughs> you're NFC. right. NFC. If, you have a, if your card is an NFC chip, then you can just be skimmed, you know, not even touching your card, just scanning you. Yeah. So be safe, uh, be safe out there. Good tips. Make sure you uh, take Learn notes. from us. Yes, very much so. <laughs> we'll see you again for episode number 44, I believe. And if you want to follow us online, make sure you follow us in all the same places. I'm going to start it out with Facebook.com slash TV. 
Follow us at uh, twitter.com slash TV. You can find us on Google+. Plus. It's gplus.to slash TV. You pinners out there, pinterest.com slash TV. And our YouTube website, as always, youtube.com slash TV. And the last one I'm going to ask that you alleviate, and we're not going to talk about because it is still not working. I think the last episode that's on there is 25. So, But it is TexNation.tv. If you want to go back and look at some old episodes, they are posted there. It's just we're a little bit behind. So either way, thanks again for following us and see us again for episode number 43 or 4, whatever it is. Maybe 5. It may be.